share my thoughts with you. Uh, there have been some excellent insights from Professor Sancheti where he talked about uh, different models of engagement between industry and universities. And Dr. Tandon also shared insights as a practitioner uh, on the aspects uh, that, they, uh, that they are involved with that takes the interaction to a very different uh, level. Um, there are, um, so uh, the partnerships between university, industry, and I would bring in one more stakeholder, which is government, have led to overall economic growth in multiple places in the world. There are some very fine examples if you look at uh, countries like US, UK, you look at Europe, you look at most of the patents that have been filed in pharmaceutical segment uh, or for example uh, the Silicon Valley and in India now we have a great story of startups that has primarily come in wherever industry and universities have partnered and government has supported with the policy and funding availability as well. So uh, I think that partnership can be a game changer in terms of developing talent. Industry goes and sets up uh, its operations wherever there is talent. Talent is one of the basic requisites. Policy, uh, a supportive policy and availability of funds, I think these are some fundamental aspects. Uh, and all these put together lead to a dramatic uh, turnaround as well. Uh, as Professor Sancheti mentioned, there are collaborations that can happen in the realm of research. And again, um, for research, um, you know, I handled uh, research engagements at HP Labs where there were global uh, collaborations fostered with University of Sunny Buffalo, with Toronto University, with uh, many of the Indian universities as well. A convergence of research priorities is very, very important. And you know, if you look at industry today or you look at the world today, sustainability is becoming a key aspect. If you look at every single government, one of the key priorities for G20 is also to mitigate climate change. I'm just giving one example. Uh, we're talking about alternate sources of energy, quantum computing is going to redefine computing. Uh, and so if we have to have a progressive research uh, uh, program at a university, it's very important to look at what are the industry leaders looking at, why, where is the funding going. And if you can carve out your PhD programs, master's programs, undergrad programs aligned with where the investments are coming in, um, there is a lot of opportunity that partnerships can get fostered. Entrepreneurship and startups from campuses have caught up in a big way. We have seen across campuses in India uh, where, for example, if you look at more mature uh, ecosystems like IITs, NITs, a uh, substantial number of startups are happening, even private universities as well. Uh, we were visiting um, IP University a few weeks back here in Delhi and we're amazed to learn there were 60 startups happening and they have built up a separate campus uh, to drive startups and not only from their own campus but affiliated colleges as well. And um, so for startups to happen again, uh, there has to be resonance with industry. You know, you need to understand where the problems lie, uh, where are the gaps, and so that makes a huge difference. Uh, then skilling and curriculum integration. I think very, very important, the employability um, of our engineering graduates or management graduates is very low uh, still, and there is a lot of work to be done here. I think the new education policy brings out a great opportunity to align our curriculum and also give credits to certifications. Autonomous universities uh, can take those calls, but there's also a national credit framework that is being set that will have portability of credits. So industry certification, if credits are given there, then I think uh, it just takes the skilling to a very, very different level. And here, uh, I would like to share a small little story of uh, success uh, at Microsoft. 
uh, we partnered i am the learning and skills lead here and uh, lead the skills charter for education at microsoft india we partnered with andhra pradesh government and the government took a bold step to um, kind of embrace microsoft certifications in newer areas like artificial intelligence cloud security data analytics visualization of data uh, and multiple other areas so it identified 1.65 lakh students across 300 colleges in andhra pradesh and um, picked up 45 different certification areas and made investments to drive certification and training of these 1.65 lakh students it was a one of the largest skilling projects in the world so an open bid was conducted and uh, people different partners microsoft partners applied and one of our global learning partners got the bid um it was a big big operation there was a project management team that government had funded to execute this project so you will be could you could there be a wild guess like how many students actually went through the certification or what could have been the pass rate any any guesses any percentage that you can think of yeah approximately that so you can can you imagine like we brought in multiple partners in about 80 universities and colleges fox were created exam centers held trainings organized access was created on a tech led platform because students were in the remote areas as well online proctored exams were facilitated 1 lakh students 1 lakh students were certified on fundamentals and role based certifications role based certifications are certifications which are linked with job roles someone wants to become a data scientist an ai developer a devops engineer and the government has shared that 1 lakh jobs have been created the enrollment in government colleges which was going down has turned uh, has turned around more people want to uh, join these colleges and more than 40000 internships happened because the other industry started flocking when they saw that the students are getting trained and are getting certified on microsoft certification it was a very bold move usually academics tend to like there are there are protocols board of studies ratification have to happen uh, then there are questions about is it valid does government recognize and all of that but in this case the it's uh, these certifications are gold standard you can check it uh, on linkedin like dr tandan you mentioned about uh, like we do not know how many jobs are being created or if we can have an insight into in which areas jobs are being created so linkedin linkedin brings out a jobs re- uh, uh, related reports area wise geography wise country wise and you see there is a uh there is a huge huge opportunity you could map out uh, the opportunities um again so the lessons learned from this you uni- know on university industry partnership is when there is convergence of vision between governments university leaders uh and academia i think there are there are um, industry partners amazing outcomes can happen we can continue to sign mous keep on discussing most often mou stay at a paper level it's just a photo opportunity uh, most people like to use it as a leverage but in reality implementation does not happen but i think the key is implement and uh, this could have a very very profound impact on students lives careers imagine in far flung village levels where nobody could have thought Uh, or awareness is also not there today they'll have jobs and i think it's a it's a fundamentally a game changer also on both sides industry and university you need to have a proper organization structure and a spark to drive the engagements very often it happens at the vice chancellor or a dean level and further down if the spark is not interested things never take off and likewise in the industry side as well funding is the third important category invest uh, with funds at both the levels both industry as well as academics as well 
Uh, I'll just try to wrap up in a minute uh, or so. I think I am nearly um, ending on my time slot. Um, there are many things uh, that you can leverage from Microsoft's portfolio. Uh, we have Microsoft Learn where we have more than 4,400 courses uh, available. Uh, you can integrate uh, the portal MS Learn at an API level with your website. Students and teachers can have customized pathways of learning. One could start as like from ground zero, you could be an educator, you could be a data scientist, you could be like there are job roles and depending upon and where you want to be, it will auto generate a learning pathway. Second is um, there is opportunity for teachers to learn. You can enroll on Microsoft Learn for Educator, become part of the global community, get certification vouchers, handbooks. Uh, we have also created mentorship opportunities and project support on cloud. Uh, so across banking, manufacturing, retailing, there are beautiful projects that you can do and that brings you closer further to the job opportunities. And we have last but not the least startup founders hub. You, you may not have venture capital banking, uh, you may not have angel investors behind you, but if you have a wonderful idea, reach out to Microsoft Startup Founders Hub. Um, there are so many uh, startups that have received funding which varies from $1,000 to $150,000 with uh, technical and business mentorship from Microsoft. So I think uh, as a company, it has evolved a lot and tried to remove barriers to create talent for the future. And as Professor Sancheti said, the thing that is most important is to be a lifelong learner because technology will evolve and uh, those cycles will keep on evolving. But if you know how to learn and you have an open mindset, in Microsoft we call it as growth mindset, Never to be bogged down by the convention, but keep on innovating and let the curiosity element lay, uh, be alive in each one of us. So with that, thank you so much uh, for listening to me.